Stagwell Content Studio, which is in the middle of all the action here at CES. I'm sitting with Kate Clow, Global Media Director at Lenovo. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. So happy to have you here. Um, Kate, tell us a little bit about your role. I work in the Global Media COE. It's a small but mighty team. My part of the team develops global media strategies together with your team at Assembly and with our marketing partners throughout Lenovo. We cover corporate brand, B2B, and consumer. Awesome. So talk to me about the last 12 months at Lenovo. What's it look like? I think it was preparation for so many things that we're hearing about here at CES and that we'll actually get to move. We've done so much preparation that we're now ready to move forward and move that into action. So specifically over the past year, we have been refining and redefining our audiences in many cases actually narrowing our focus because we found that as we made this strong pivot toward full customer decision journey there were so many more moments during which we wanted to engage with people but our budgets weren't sufficient to be there at all of those crossroads where consumers have decisions to make so we refined our audiences so that we can be there in all the right moments produce a you know more diverse range of creative and so next year we'll move forward and activate all of that very cool, very cool. So AI has kind of been the it girl in the tech space over the last year. And we really aren't seeing those conversations slowing down. What has, how has Lenovo leveraged AI or any other emerging technology in the way that you market to consumers? Well, I'll start with our products. At CES this week, we actually debuted more than 40 products and solutions that make use of AI. And that included AI integration, um, in, in the local hardware for gaming, for creators, for productivity in the workplace. So from a business standpoint, that's how we're making use of AI and offering that to you all. Um, marketing, I use it every day in very simplistic ways, you know, to develop outlines for RFPs, for decks. And today I'm using public AI, so it's not really writing in my voice. So it's just like a little bit of a jump start, and then you do the rest of the work. Um, for media, we use all of the AI-powered uh, optimization solutions that our partners are making available, like Google's Performance Max is probably the one that most people are familiar with. And um, we see performance increasing, but there, there's two limitations with, with the common solutions right now. And the first is that they're optimizing toward digital media metrics, like a click, a website visit, a conversion, but a lot of the work that we're doing is aimed at creating changes in how people think of Lenovo. It's increasing awareness, consideration. So we are talking with a partner, Chalice, that fields brand lift study surveys in real time and can use AI to power the optimization based on changes from unaware to aware, not considering to considering, so that we can now use that powerful optimization solution, not just for digital actions, but but changes, changing people's minds, opening their minds to Lenovo. So that's exciting. And then also, you know, you need to offer, you need to offer uh, AI a diversity, uh, a lot of variety to work with if you want to give it the freedom to optimize and find what really works. And so I think we need to move toward producing a much larger variety of creative for it to work with. Right. Um, and then ultimately, maybe we loosen the reins, we loosen control a little bit over creation so that the generative AI can do some of that creation for us. Yeah, it's so it's so interesting and I'm really excited about all of the advancements that we're seeing in AI. I'm not one of those people who's afraid of it like so many people are. I'm, I'm excited about yeah. it and I'm excited to see where we're gonna go with it. Me too. So let's talk a little bit about cookie deprecation. There okay. are so many brands who are concerned about what this means for their business. What is Lenovo doing to kind of yeah. prep for that? We've been talking about it for so long, but the time is now. A year from now, if we don't have strategies um, to work around this, then we're gonna lose the precision and scale that we've been so accustomed to historically. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the things that we need to do, um, particularly in the consumer area, is focus on building a larger first party data set. Mm -hmm. And then we'll be able to use that in one-to-one -one ways. And then we can use things like probabilistic targeting to try to expand that scale. Mm -hmm. um, something that I find, that's been really fun for me is that we've been doing a lot more contextual targeting. And it really brings me back to my early days in media, like 20 years ago, when we made the move from print planning to digital. And so instead of deciding among dozens of publications based on the content, the quality, the readership, we were then pulling reports in Comscore RF or Nielsen Net Ratings, and you'd look at thousands of sites. And you could you know, review all the content, target contextually. We're going back to that in some ways. And I think, I think it's really exciting. I think a side benefit of all of these efforts to preserve precision and scale is that we might finally stop talking about demographics. I think it's just going to enable us to identify behaviors, interests, moments that are by far the best predictors of interest in our products. And then finally, I'm hoping we can start talking about gender and age and um, household income and zip codes and, and things like that. So what's in store for Lenovo over the next year? Um, we are going to continue to advance our vision for AI for all across corporate brand, B2B, consumer. Um, I think some of the most exciting developments for us will be in B2B. We have an excellent activation solution that we're rolling out with two partners, Foundry and Spiceworks. Um, we will be able to reach out to target accounts with uh, reaching the entire decision-making committee. I think we're gonna do some really exciting, unexpected things in B2B. Uh, we don't want it to be boring. And for that, we partly rely on our partnership with F1 because F1 is sexy, it is exciting. Um, but even beyond that, there's some exciting thing that, things that we'll be able to do. Um, and then I would keep an eye on gaming. We launched new products here at CES, um, totally personalizing the gaming experience within these new laptops. Um, exciting sets of peripherals. I just bought my 13-year-old uh, a Lenovo 34-inch curved gaming screen. Oh he my was, gosh! That was that was a pretty good holiday gift. Yeah. Um, all across consumer and B2B, there are lots of exciting things. You'll continue to be hearing from us about AI for all. Absolutely. All right. I'm excited about it. And then since we're here at CES, is there anything that you're excited to see? I know that I should talk about things that are closer to what I do. I'm certainly <laughs> exciting to uh, excited to walk more through uh, the gaming area of the mm -hmm. convention center, but there's amazing audio technology out there. I was just looking at uh, some earbuds that allow you to swim two meters deep for up to two hours, and I thought, okay, so next time I'm gonna swim across Lake Michigan, I've got a solution available to me. Are you swimming across no, Lake no, Michigan? No, I will never do that. <laughs> I will never do that. But if I wanted to, um, yeah. and then I was mentioning to you just before, there are these massage chairs that entirely cocoon your body. The line is hundreds of people deep I because I, I don't think people will get out of the massage chairs. Yeah. So there's like thousands of things to explore out there. So I'm really enjoying this, but I hope that you and I are both gonna get back in there and yes, see more. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Um, thank you. I have enjoyed this conversation, it's been lovely. Me too, thanks a lot. Oh,